Every time I'd walk to 2112 from the blue line, I'd walk into this bridge. There was a guy that lived there, and I've been interning at 2112 since September. But this dude lives under that bridge. I'd walk by when it was 10 degrees outside, and there he was, wrapped up in some blankets surrounded by his paper bag fort. He spent the entire winter under that bridge. Literally spent winter in Chicago, outside. Who do you think he was? I mean, he wasn't always like that, right? Like what? Harder than titanium. The man is a champion. Who do you think he might have been, though? Do you think he planned to spend winter in Chicago under a bridge? I don't know. I guess I never really asked him. Why not? My name is Michael Ferguson. I'm 35 years old, and I'm from Chicago and Joliet. Like, I don't remember really much anything in my childhood. The only thing I remember is that window getting broken out, me shoved into that window. Go get it, boy. And I'm like, okay. And I broke into like 50 homes before that one house. Everything was great, but then that one time I had to go in the house and people had to be here. And he decided to grab me and shake me and want to like hurt me. So I want to hurt him back, you know? That's it. Turned around, he was, we were on the stairs, and I hit him. He fell, he was dead, instantly. He gave me the first degree murder, 20 years. He gave me 20, I did 17 years, seven months. I had a great job, condo, everything. Lost a job, went to the street. Like, you can't be homeless and just walk around here sober, man. It's like, this is a night. It's so depressing as it is, you know? So it's like, I have to, like, I gotta have something, you know? You get up in the morning, you, you fly your sign, you make your money, you get high, you go to bed, get up and do it all over again. And I'm not gonna bullshit you, I've fucking stolen again. I've robbed people. It sucks out here, man. I, you know, it's like, I try, I stayed out here for two years not using drugs, and I just can't do it. There's no fucking way I can be homeless and not do drugs. There's no fucking way. I gotta stop doing drugs. I'm ready to stop them, man. This shit's a nightmare. There's nobody I can pick up the phone and say, hey, mom, can you help me? I haven't talked to my parents since like two, 2000. I haven't seen my mom and dad since 2001, 2002. They look at me like I'm a disease. They don't even pay attention to us, man. Sometimes they, when I ask, hey, can you help me and my wife get something to eat for the night? And they say, sorry, we can't help you. I even say, you know, thanks for acknowledging me. I'm a human being, too. But sometimes that's, a, that's about the only thing I like to hear, man. Some people say, guys, like, you're fucking nuts. Maybe I need some help. Maybe someone just needs to help me to the point where I need help. Or maybe I need someone to hug me and give me something, you know, like some inspiration or something. I don't know. But shit, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm asking for too much. I mean, so, I could sit down here and rush out. I mean, you should come down on state and fucking lake at fucking 5 o'clock. There's like 800 people walking on that street at that time. Not a single person would look at me. Josh Moore, 27 years of age, from Chicago, Illinois. Sometimes what you see is not always what it appears. A lot of people want you to be the epitome of their sorrow, so it's like they want to mess up your function. It's like, hey, I, I have problems with myself, so you know what? I want you to have problems with your day. You know, a lot of people, just got to understand that they can't control or fix things that are already made about you. There's art in people that you can't take away. A lot of people just look for schematics and ways of trying to uh, dehumanize people. If you see something in yourself or if you can find it, you better find it because we are good people. Everybody's a good person, I think. My dad always used to tell me he was afraid of heights. I grew up afraid of heights. I guess my whole life, even growing up, everyone would treat people like that the same. I think it, I became that prejudice, that kind of stigma. In my head, I can't help him, I gotta get on. She's gonna spend it on booze, why can't he just get a job? But I'd think about it later when the hustle of the day kind of wore off and I could've just stopped and said hi, or talked for a minute to help them not feel like invisible. 
I think it's fear of association. Whatever caused their situation rubs off on you. You see the systemic issue, not the person, and the issue is somehow viral. Like you might catch it if you get too close. What's next? <laughs>